All right, so now we're going to talk about solving for an indicated variable where we have domain restrictions. So we're basically going to take everything we've done before and we're going to put it all together. You may want to print out your notes template on just this so you have this so you don't have to copy it all down. I don't know that it's necessarily worth your time to copy it all down if you are taking notes manually. A lot of this stuff you should already know, so you may just be able to summarize this if you don't want to print or don't have access to printing out the notes template. But these are just the steps you learned back in Algebra 1 for solving linear equations. You distribute, you combine like terms on each side, you add or subtract so that you have a variable on only one side, you get rid of add or subtract, you get rid of multiply, divide, and I'm going to add this step here. We're going to list domain restrictions. So if in these next situations we're given a linear equation, these are the steps we're going to take. However, we're not always going to be given a linear equation. We also have to recognize that sometimes when we try to get the variable on one side, we'll still do this step, they may not be able to be combined because the one may have one or more variables that the other one doesn't have. In that situation, if we do not have like terms and our variable that we want to, to solve for appears twice, twice we're going to use factoring to assist us. Also, we cannot solve for a variable if it's in the denominator. So it's only if the variable is in the denominator. If that occurs, we're going to cross multiply first. And remember, you can only cross multiply if you have a fraction equal to a fraction. So if you have more or uh, extra terms, we're not going to be able to do that cross multiplying. So each of the three examples are slightly different, so please do make sure and watch all three of them. On this first example, I'm asked to solve for x. So the first thing I notice is that I have nothing to distribute. I have no like terms on each side, but I do have a variable on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead, and because I'm going to anticipate that I'm going to get the variable by itself in the end, I'm going to subtract x over a from both sides. Doing that gives me 1 equals x over b minus x over a. And notice this is the situation where even though these both have an x, they're not like terms since one has a denominator of b and the other one has a denominator of a. I could work to get a common denominator, but I would rather go ahead and factor to get that x out of there. So I'm going to say 1 equals x times 1 over b minus 1 over a when I take that x out. Now, if my only goal is to solve for x, therefore get x by itself, if I divide by this, I will have my x by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's not going to look real nice, but I'm going to have the x by itself. So I'm going to have 1 over... 1 over b minus 1 over a equals x. Again, what did I do? I divided both sides by this expression. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. There is an objective later on in this unit where you're going to learn how you would get rid of those little fractions. But for the time being, since we haven't learned that yet, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and say there's my expression with x by itself. But I have to look at my denominator. So notice my denominator of 1 over b minus 1 over a cannot be 0. Well, if I added 1 over a to both sides, then I could say that 1 over b cannot equal 1 over a. But isn't this fraction equal to a fraction? So if I cross multiply, my best answer for my restrictions is that a cannot equal b. So I have my reduced form and I have my restrictions. Let's go ahead and look at example 2. Example 2, I'm asked to do the same thing. I'm solving for x. So first thing I notice is that I have x in the denominator. And notice that I do not want to have my variable in the denominator. However, I cannot cross multiply because of this minus 4a. And I actually wanted that to be minus 4. So uh, I'm going to get rid of that a. I must have accidentally hit that when I was typing up the notes template, so I apologize for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that 4 by adding a 4 to both sides, giving me 3 over x equals 2b minus 3b squared plus 4. And now I'm going to go ahead and say I want to get that x out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. Doing so will allow my x's to cancel, but I have to use parentheses to show that I'm multiplying the entire right side by x, not just one piece of it. Now, I can say, well, if I want to get x by itself, I'm not going to distribute because I can get x by itself right away if I just divide by this expression. 
So I get dividing both sides by 2b minus 3b squared plus 4, I get 3 over that expression equals x. And I've successfully solved for x. I've gotten x by itself. Now as far as my restrictions go, I know that my denominator, and I'm going to rewrite my denominator in standard form over here, my denominator of negative 3b squared plus 2b plus 4 cannot equal 0. Well, this is quadratic, so I'm going to go ahead and say that that must mean that x cannot equal, or I guess b, not x, b cannot equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Cleaning up my radical, that tells me that b cannot equal negative 2 plus or minus the radical of 52 all over negative 6. Well, I know 52 has a perfect square in it, so I'm going to go ahead and extend that and say b cannot equal negative 2 plus or minus. 52 is 4 times 13, so radical 4 becomes 2 times radical 13 all over negative 6. Taking one final step by dividing everything by 2, I get a restriction of b cannot equal negative 1 plus or minus the radical 13 all over 3. And again, I have my simplified form with my restrictions. Looking at one final example, I'm asked to solve for the letter G here. I see I have much more going on in this one than I have in the previous ones. But the first thing I notice is I have fraction equal to a fraction. I also notice that I have a G here and here. So I would like my G's, since that's a variable I'm trying to find, to be on the same side. However, I cannot move either of them without getting rid of the fraction first. So I'm going to go ahead and start by cross multiplying. So I'm going to have negative 6i times the entire top. I show it's by the entire top by using parentheses. Equals negative 4 times 6gh minus 8i. Distributing, I get 36gi plus 60 hi equals negative 24 gh plus 32 i. So now I want to get anything, since I'm solving for g, that contains a g on one side and anything that does not contain a g on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 60 hi from both sides and I'm going to go ahead and add the 24 gh to both sides. Doing that, I do not have like terms since this has a gi and this has a gh, so those are going to stay separate. I'll get 36gi plus 24gh equals, again, these need to stay separate since this has an i and this has an hi, they're not like terms, 32i minus 60hi. And now I realize that these two terms both have a g, so I'm going to factor that g out, leaving me with 36i plus 24h equals 32i minus 60hi. I realize that g was not my greatest common factor. 24 and 36 here are both divisible by 4, or 6 even. However, I'm not concerned about those. The reason I'm taking only a G out is because I want to get G by itself. And if I take just a G out, I can now divide both sides by this expression, giving me G equals 32I minus 60HI all over 36I plus 24H. I cannot cancel because I'm adding and subtracting. I'm not multiplying. However, I can say that since every single term is divisible by 4, I can reduce all terms by 4, giving me g equals 8i minus 15hi all over 9i plus 6h. Listing my restrictions, I would say that 9i plus 6h cannot equal 0. Therefore, 9i cannot equal negative 6h. Both of these can be reduced by 3, saying 3i cannot equal negative 2h. 
if I wanted to, I could state one term in one variable in terms of the other. For example, I could say i cannot equal negative two thirds h, or I could say h could not cannot equal negative three over two. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this, but just know that I could state one terms in, in one variable in terms of the other. But again, simplest form and restrictions. So just to recap before, oh, I can't move that. Um, I was going to move back up to the top, but just so I'll just kind of talk about it a little bit. Just to recap, we will use some of the rules that we learned in Algebra 1 when solving linear equations, but we also want to take what we've learned here in Algebra 2 and apply factoring if we have the variable appearing twice but not being able to combine like terms like we did here. And we also want to watch that if we have a variable in the denominator, we have to get that that fraction by itself and cross multiply to get that variable out of the denominator in order to solve.